hey, at least it's getting a little better. How you going? Welcome to my Star Trek Picard Season 1 Episode 6, The Impossible Box Review. So Soji's having these dreams about her being a kid and creeping around her house. And it's all dark and stormy. So Narek says that they're basically more like nightmares. And there's some garbage in this episode about how Romulans don't give out their real name. They have a false name and they only give out their real name to the people they love. Oh. Kind of like the backdoor shenanigans they talked about in the previous episode. So Narek says to Soju that if these dreams are causing you trouble, maybe she should talk to her mum. And then back on the La Tarina, Gerardi's filling uh, Picard in on Maddox's death. And she says something about how his heart couldn't take it. And like, that's, that's, all, that's all they needed to know. Moving on, she also informs him that Maddox created Soji and Darge to investigate the real reason behind the ban on synths. So he waited 17 years. And then Picard flips his lid because Gerardi mentions that maybe the Borg have changed since he was last there. And he's like, nah, the Borg don't change. They metastasize. So they're like a cancer, I guess. So then Picard calms down and goes back into his hollow suite and... He asked the computer to look up information on uh, the artifact, uh, the treaty, and the Borg. And then he sees pics of Hugh, and he sees pics of himself as Locutus. And for some reason, in the pics of Locutus, his like cybernetic implant is on the wrong side. I think they wanted it to look like it was on the normal side when you look through his semi-transparent display at him so that their faces would, like, merge. It's just a little thing and I noticed and it just ticks me off. Kind of sums up this series, really. It just throws away, like, canon for the sake of doing something cool. So then Rios is playing with his balls and getting sweaty. And then Gerardi comes in, grabs his ball and says, uh, why do you like it in space? And this scene goes nowhere, except for she tries to kiss him and he, she says... Something about how she's never slept with the captain of anything. Okay. And Rios is shirtless in this scene and you'll notice that he's missing his scar. Like in the third or fourth episode where they finally met him, he had a piece of metal sticking out of his shoulder and he told the doctor not to like treat the scar. Like he wanted to get the scar because it's cool. But now he doesn't have any scar there. But he has scars elsewhere. He has one further down on his arm. And then he has like a bullet hole in his chest. So inconsistency there. And like real talk. Is Gerardi meant to be hot? Like do they think that she's a sex symbol or something? Each to their own I guess. And then we're back on the Borg cube with the incest twins. And Narek is questioning why Maddox would program a robot to dream. I think that's a good question. So his theory is that when the robot, like, finds evidence that it's not a robot in its brain, it pushes that memory to a different spot of the brain. And then eventually those memories sort of come out in dreams. So apparently he just needs to talk to her about her dreams. So the reclamation project that's being run on the Borg cube is actually independent from the Romulans. So if Picard can get approval from the Federation, then they'll be allowed to get on board the cube. But luckily Hugh's the director of it, so what are the odds of that? So then their plan is to get Raffi to sweet talk some admiral in Starfleet. So if Raffi had stayed in Free Cloud, then she wouldn't have been there to be able to convince this Admiral to give them diplomatic uh, passports. And if Picard hadn't have just recently looked up information about the Borg Cube reclamation and the treaty, he never would have known that Hugh was there. So they would have had two of their ends missing. This is the worst kind of writing where a major hurdle is solved by some object or person that was introduced just like 10 minutes ago. 
and not just that they can be used in some manner, but that they're essential. So when Rafi calls this admiral woman, uh, the admiral says to her, oh, what do you need? And Rafi's like, oh, what are you trying to say? That I only call you when I need something? And I thought they were going to pan over to Picard and have him go like, hmm, see? But they didn't. So that was a wasted opportunity. And this admiral, or whatever her rank is, says that access is basically only given for scientific research. And I'm thinking, they've got Girardi there, like the Federation's foremost robotics researcher. So Rafi tells this admiral that basically, if you don't give us the diplomatic credentials, then we're just going to rock up anyway, and we're going to look like spies. And if we look like spies, then you denying any knowledge of our presence is just going to look even worse. And then Rafi gets a standing ovation for a performance, and it's super cringy. Oh my god. It really feels like the writers are just like giving themselves a good old pat on the back. Ah, and there's also a TNG fanfare in there on the trumpets. Just to remind you that TNG was all about blackmailing people. So Narek tells Soji that he looked into her calls and apparently all of them last 70 seconds. And there's no reason given for why they last 70 seconds. Like, why does she fall asleep at 70 seconds? Or why does the call end at 77, 70 seconds? Just that they end at 70 seconds. So then Soji calls her mum and she starts falling asleep at about 70 seconds. And she like looks around and she grabs a clay modelling tool and stabs herself in the hand with it. But the clay modelling tool just bends out of the way. And then her mum starts repeating lines, so she's clearly a simulation. But who set up the simulation and why is it a simulation? Why can't they just have a real person? So Picard's a bit hesitant because the diplomatic credentials he's been given say that only he can go aboard. Uh, so Elnor says, like, oh, I'm not leaving you. And Picard says to him, no matter what happens, you will not leave this ship. So, of course, Elnor's going to leave the ship. And then Soji wakes up from her little nap and she's like, wait a minute. And she goes and grabs all her prized possessions and starts scanning them. Must be some sort of Borg reclamation tool that tells you how old things are. And it turns out that all of her possessions, including her necklace, are 37 months old or thereabouts. So she's like three years old. And then Picard beams across into some like empty, vacant chasm area. <laughs> That's a weird spot to meet someone. And he starts getting these flashbacks. And the camera zooms around and it goes down to like one of the Borgs in their little alcove recharging. And he opens his eyes. And I'm like, ooh, did he recognize that Locutus of Borg was on board? Not sure. So Picard gets all dizzy and like starts having a panic attack. And these people start grabbing him and... He's like, let go of me, let go of me. But luckily, old Stitchface was there to stop him from falling over the edge. So Picard tells Hugh that he's looking for Soji and Hugh's like, oh yeah, I know her. She's a weird one. And then there's that Romulan who turned up two weeks ago and pretended that he wasn't looking for her. And in the space of 20 minutes, Picard realises that the reclaimed Borg are actually the victims and they're not monsters. So just because someone has a bad background doesn't mean that they're a bad person. And Hugh says something about the only difference now is that our queen is now a Romulan. So then Raffi wakes up from a snake leaf induced coma and she uh, wonders what would the Tel Shiar want with a synth? It's almost as if the plot is three weeks behind the viewers. So then Narek takes Soji to do something called the Zalmach. And it's like some sort of a ritual where you pace around the floor and do different things at different points. And then to make Soji feel at peace, he tells her that his name is Rian Johnson. No, not Johnson, just Rian. I mean, he didn't have to give her a real name, so what does it matter? And then he guides her through her memories of this dream and he's like, oh, you know, you, you need to look at your father. And she looks at her father and he's all fuzzy and he looks like a black man, but... That's beside the point. And then he's like, oh, now look around the room. And she looks like, oh, there's a skylight. And then she's like, oh, there's something on the table. And he's like, look at it. Look, look at what's on the table. And she's like, it's me. And I'm made out of wood. Well, that kind of explains her acting. And 
then he says like uh, you know look up through the skylight and she looks up through the skylight and she's like there's there's two red moons and there's lots of lightning so basically from this scene we got the knowledge that she came from a planet with two red moons and lightning so creepy incest sisters like guess what now we know that she's from a planet with two moons and lots of lightning so then Narek tells her, like, you're not even a real person, go away. And he puts his little puzzle box thing on a stand where she put her shoes when she walked into the room and he lets it operate itself and it opens itself and it releases like a red gas, which is apparently radioactive because they can't go in there to finish her off. So Soji starts panicking and she starts like hitting things and hits the floor and it cracks because it's wood. And she realizes, man, I, I got super strength here. So she punches her way through the floor. Awesome. And one of the Borg actually recognized Picard as Locutus, which is interesting. That is actually interesting. <laughs> So Picard and Hugh track down Soji and Picard flashes the necklace that he got from Daj and he's like, come with me. So she does. And Hugh opens what's called a queen cell and there's apparently a spatial trajector in there which for all intents and purposes is a teleporter. And just as they're about to be arrested, Alnor beams in and kills them. So Picard's like, quick, Elnor, let's go. And Elnor's like, no, I'm going to stay here and defend your escape. And Picard's like, oh, well, like, you shouldn't. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I will. So after wanting Picard to let him go with him for all this time, now he refuses to go with him. Uh, it makes no sense. So Hugh's describing this teleporter and he's like, this thing can transport matter. And Soji's like, 40,000 light years. And it's like... Okay, how do you know this stuff? No one has ever seen one of these things before. So Picard tells Rios to meet them at some planet and him and Soji walk through the teleporter and then Hugh's like, you need to give me a couple of minutes so I can lock this place down before the guards come. And Elnor's like, yeah, okay, I can do that. And then the screen goes black and Elnor says, please, my friends, choose to live. <sighs> I just cringed. I nearly doubled over with cringe. It was painful. So this episode's a little bit better. It's getting a 6 out of 10 from me. Uh, something actually happened. This episode actually moved the plot along. Once again, there's some massive contrivances, though. Like, if Raffi hadn't have come back, she wouldn't have been able to blackmail that Admiral woman. And then if Hugh wasn't on the reclamation project, then Picard wouldn't have had an in. And Narek just has radioactive gas in his puzzle box for some reason even though he let his sister just play with it like what happens if she opens it kills them both and that cringy ending oh my god it was terrible please friends choose life so i'm assuming elnor took a pattern enhancer with him so that him and hugh could be beamed back aboard the last arena although surely the romulans have ships nearby so maybe there'll be a little bit of action and I hope they remember that Soji's barefoot and she doesn't just magically grow shoes. And she also needs to remember that she has superpowers. Anyway, that's enough for me. I hope you enjoyed it more than I did. Hopefully I'll see you again next week. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. See ya.